I am Sapna Sharma, and I am here to uh, present a paper. I am here along with Ragini to present a very interesting paper published by six Google researchers uh, in May 2019. The researchers are uh, David Berthlot, Nicholas Carlini, Ian Goodfellow, Avital Oliver, Nicholas Papernot, and Colin Rappel. The title of the paper is Mix Match. a holistic approach to semi supervised learning so next slide please so we will be covering the uh, background uh, and purpose to see why mix match was uh, 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 required the key terms to understand the algorithm we will be giving a brief description of the algorithm and the results of the experiments performed by the authors so we are all aware that there uh, uh, we are all aware of the three main classes of the machine learning that is the supervised machine learning the unsupervised machine learning and the semi supervised machine learning while Uh, the supervised machine learning needs the ground truth that is the label data to build a model the unsupervised machine learning predicts unlabeled data using clustering techniques now the major concern for most data scientists is the labeled data as we ourselves face the same problem while building a model for wound tissue classification it is very difficult to get an expert to label the whole set of data thus the scarcity of labeled data is the major con constraint for supervised machine learning now here is where the semi supervised machine learning plays a major role which takes the advantages of both supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning to give us labeled data and according to the authors of the paper mix match claims to have developed a technique to label the unlabeled data with much better accuracy than the present day semi supervised techniques as per the abstract of the paper mix match unifies the current dominant approaches used in semi supervised learning to produce a new algorithm that works by guessing low entropy labels for data augmented unlabeled examples and mixing labeled and unlabeled data using mix up so before going to the actual algorithm let's just have a look at the key terms which will be used to understand the algorithm the consistency regularization it applies uh, data augmentation to semi supervised learning by leveraging the idea that a classifier should output the same class distribution for an unlabeled example even after it has been augmented in other words labels should not change when noise is added the model called pi model is used mix match utilizes a form of consistency regularization through the use of standard data augmentation for images such as random horizontal flips and crops now the entropy minimization uh, it uh, basically means that we need to reduce the randomness in the prediction of the unlabeled data or the classifier decision boundary uh, should not pass through the high density region of the margin marginal data distribution this is done by outputting low entropy prediction on the unlabeled data so mix match also implicitly achieves entropy minimization by adding a loss function and using a sharpening function on the uh, target distribution for unlabeled data the traditional regularization is again a method applied to avoid overfitting of the model uh, we have two types of regularization l1 or the lasso regression 
and L2 or the ridge regression. The ridge regression adds squared magnitude of coefficient as penalty to loss function and mix match uses the squared or the L2 loss on prediction and guessed labels. And lastly, the mean teacher. To overcome the problem of inconsistency in using the exponential moving average of label prediction on each training set on large data, a mean teacher, a method that averages model weights instead of label prediction is used. Mean teacher improves the test accuracy and enables training uh, with fewer model, uh, fewer labels. So uh, I'll be giving a, a brief description of the steps involved in mix match uh, as the four uh, points are like the data augmentation, label guessing, entropy regularization, and mix up. So in uh, data augmentation, it is common approach to compensate the scarcity of the unlabeled data. And uh, data augmentation is done by applying transformations on the input data points such, such that the uh, label uh, remains unchanged. Data augmentation is done both on uh, labeled and unlabeled data. The individual augmentations are used for generating a guessed label. We'll be seeing more about it. Label guessing. For each unlabeled example, MixMatch produces a guess for the example's label using the model's prediction. This guess is later used in unsupervised lost term. The entropy regularization to enforce the fact that the classifier decision boundary should not pass through the high density region of marginal data distribution, the classifier outputs low entropy prediction on unlabeled data. This is done by adding loss term, which minimizes the entropy for the unlabeled data. Mix match applies sharpening function to reduce the entropy of the label distribution. And uh, this is done by adjusting the temperature of the categorical distribution. Now the last is the mix up. A mix up is a recently proposed method for uh, training deep neural networks where additional samples are generated during training by convexly combining random pairs of images and their associated labels. By doing so, Mixup regularizes the neural network to favor simple linear behavior in between training examples. Mixup also reduces the memorization of corrupt labels, increases the robustness of adversarial example. Mix match uses mix up with a slight modification as the final step of its algorithm. Now Ragini will be presenting the slides. Hey, Adrian, uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay, brilliant. So uh, thank you, Sapna, for um, giving a brief introduction about the paper. Uh, before I get into the algorithm, I wanted to just stop for a bit and ask if there are any questions anybody has so far. Okay, I guess not. So I start from um, talking about uh, more on the algorithm bits where uh, you see this is um, an image taken from the paper where it say, says that uh, the algorithm basically augments uh, the unlabeled image uh, and tries and classifies it based on the number of augmentations and then draws an average um, to guess the label of this unlabeled image that it has. After it has this average uh, getting predicted or the guess label getting predicted, that guess label gets sharpened. Uh, what sharpening does is it basically um, moves the line
line of uh, prediction or the line where the decisions are made to work away from the uh, the higher density association of the data points uh, because that makes it easier to give a consistent uh, prediction and also increases the confidence of the predicted uh, label. As you see, in label guessing, we only uh, guess the label of the unlabeled data. However, we do augmentations on both labeled and unlabeled data to come to this um, label guessing, wherein the label is guessed based on whatever is in the labeled data as well as in the unlabeled data. But transformations are mostly done on the unlabeled data uh, as many times as required. But according to what the authors have seen and gotten the results, uh, K, that is the number of augmentations, uh, is two. That given uh, uh, a result which did outperform all the standard uh, state of art methods. After this, uh, the sharpening formula or the equation that they've used, where they do have another tuning parameter called as T, which is the temperature required to sharpen the image uh, prediction or the label that is guessed uh, based on the average um, prediction that is. Uh, obtained in the previous step, they average, uh, they take the decision boundary away and make the prediction more confident so that when uh, the loss is calculated on the unlabeled data, it, it is not uh, affecting um, the, the final prediction. After sharpening, what remains is two sets of data. One is the augmented labeled data with the sharpened predictions, and the labeled data, which already has its own label. So what is done is a mix up based on this uh, parameter tuning, which is called alpha. So what basically mix up does, is let's say uh, you have an image of a, a tiger and a cheetah. And you want to see uh, how much of one image corresponds to a tiger and how much one image corresponds to a cheetah. So what you do is you mix these up together, saying 80, 20, and have a new label saying that that image is now classified as 80% of a tiger and 20% of a cheetah. And that mix up is this alpha value, which is again tuned based on uh, your data sets and uh, availability of the number of uh, data that, or images that are collected. I forgot to mention the sharpening temperature uh, value that they, the authors have taken as a constant for their experiments. It's 0.5, uh, yeah, I think it's 0.5, I've the far back and let me just quickly go back and see. Um, I, I think it's in the next slide, so we can look. Yeah, it's 0.5. So what they they tuned it uh, to sharpen the picture, uh, sharpen the uh, the prediction. Then they tune in the alpha parameter to have a proper mix up of the labeled and unlabeled data, and they form in a big bunch of mixed. Um, data set which has unlabeled as well as labeled data set. And I think we've been just talking too much of labeled and unlabeled. This is the most important uh, factor of a semi-supervised learning method wherein you have your training set that comprises of labeled as well as unlabeled data. Uh, the reason being it increases the chances of getting more labeled data, which in turn will be fed to your model to have a larger training set than what was initially available. So all this is getting done to ensure that your training set increases in number than what you have earlier. The last step in um, the algorithm is calculating the loss. 
Because we have a label set, the first loss that gets calculated is the cross entropy loss for supervised learning. And the second one, as Sapna mentioned, is the L2 loss for the unlabeled learning. I would stop here and ask if there were any questions. Okay, I'll go forward. So this slide explains what I just talked about, but in a more um, direct way and uh, what all they have tuned in. So uh, the key factors to keep in mind for this algorithm to perform better or worse is tuning these hyperparameters as the augmentations. <coughs> sorry, K. Oh, sorry. Uh, then the, the sharpening temperature, T, the the parameters for mix-up, that's alpha, and the weight of the unsupervised consistency loss, lambda, which is uh, 100 in this case. Um, the authors performed two sets of experiments. One was a normal semi-supervised experiment setup where they compared it to the state-of-art uh, semi-supervised learning models. And um, the other one is um, the, the method in which they cut out all the additional um, transformations or sharpening or um, any extra effort that they've put in to get into the efficiency or the accuracy level that the model performs to show that which uh, bit in the algorithm performed the best to be, get in the uh, desired results or the desired accuracy at the end. So for the semi-supervised experiment setup, uh, they used a wide ResNet model with 28 layers and a growth of factor two. The data sets were our standard data sets as the CIFAR 10, CIFAR 100, the SVHN, which is the street view house numbers and the STLs. Uh, the models to compare were the mean teacher, as Sapna explained in her uh, a brief introduction about what mean teacher does. It is one of the semi-supervised learning methods wherein the labels are based on the exponential loading average, a virtual adversarial training, again, a semi-supervised method, and the pseudo-labeling, again, a semi-supervised uh, standard uh, model. So you see from the results where <clears throat> the model that they used initially was the CIFAR 10 data set. A supervised training of 50,000 examples was trained to, to give in the said accuracy. But as comparison with mismatch, it is used in 250 labels to give in the desired output. Similarly, they did it with SVHN, again with 73,256 examples with no unlabeled data at all. And they got in the said with the label of labels of 250 again, um, it gave in the said efficiency. So what I mean by 250 labels and two and 73,257 examples is that the entire data set was used for training purposes for this particular supervised uh, experiment. Out of the 73,257, only 250 labels were used in to train the remainder of the unlabeled uh, data set to get in the performance that it shows in the results. And this is the ablution study setup where I said that they talked about adding or removing additional components that they use to come to this level to show which of the exact step in the algorithm performed um, better than the rest. So you see the first one is about the mix and match where it's 100% mix and match and it gave an error rate of 11% for 250 labels and an error rate of 6%, which is quite good for 4,000 labels. They removed the distribution averaging or the guess labels and said the number of transformations as one. It gave in a 17% uh, error rate. Again, no sharpening. It gave in 27% <clears throat> uh, 
they had in an um, they did it mixed up, they did it with label data mixed up, they did it with unlabeled data mixed up. And you see in this that the mix up is benefiting the, the performance of this model. Um, going to the end, uh, concluding what we have understood from the paper or the basic purpose of what the authors wanted to showcase using all the components that they have in creating the algorithm, it is seen that the hyperparameters that they've used is the augmentations, the sharpening, the mix and match, and the loss that they've calculated. It seems that they are, have contributed quite well in the performance of the model. But out of that, in the, as you've seen in the previous slide, that the mix-up seems to be the most important factor contributing to this. Um, a mix-up, again, is a tuning uh, hyperparameter. And if you tune it further, you probably might get in better results. If you don't tune it as much, you might get in less results. Um, so these were the positives that I could get or we could see in uh, the paper. However, there is a bit of uh, a negative um, that that comes out uh, through this uh, algorithm that the time and cost needed to generate all the transformations, the mix up, and have a neural network set up on it does take a lot of time. And it also requires additional GPUs to be set in, which perhaps could be seen as an additional overhead but it still does perform a lot better. Also, um, it leave, needs a lot less data to start to train in terms of having any expert coming in, signing up uh, the training set saying that yes, A label is an A label, B label is a B label. So you see that this method does showcase that it is one of um, a better ways to go forward in uh, semi-supervised space. Um, for further reading, I have listed a couple of uh, papers to go ahead and understand where the thought for building up this model came through. Um, and I think this is the last slide. If you have any questions, I should be glad to answer them. Um, did you try to use the implementation that they provided on mm -hmm. online? Yes, I, I did try it. I tried on the Boom data set and I could share in uh, my uh, uh, code base with you to give it a try. So, so the, the, the results were, were really good? It, did it improve? Uh, well, we don't have enough of um, data for the Boom's data set. So I would say it did perform good. Uh, I'm not really sure whether it will perform better uh, because the data was quite less, but I do see that it will go ahead and do a better job. Gotcha. Awesome. Thanks. Any further questions? I don't have a question, but I was wondering if uh, you could share um, the notebook that you tried to run it with Wound. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's one type you use, or was it, uh, which category of Wound did you use? All of them. It's a semi-supervised learning space, so labels are given for all, and then I took in half of that as an unlabeled set and not have labels for it. OK. Uh, could you maybe share that on the channel? Yes, I will send. I'll send Appreciate it. it. Sure, yeah. thank you.
Uh, so, yeah, I have a question. Uh, so what are the other, like, I, I'm not quite, uh, like, uh, I'm quite familiar with semi-supervised linear algorithms. So what is the, like, what's the state of the art bet before this algorithm? What, what, what did they compare their algorithms to in this paper? Um, so I didn't quite understand your question. So, so before, so when when they introduce this algorithm, so they have they, they should compare it to something that 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 is how how are things done before this uh, uh, mix of algorithms or semi supervised. So they did it as uh, if you see in here, um, uh, they've used in a supervised method wherein they used all the fifty thousand examples that were labeled. So they needed labels for fifty thousand. Items or um, entities, and they had to train based on that. But with the mix match coming in, they reduced the number of training sets or label sets to 250. If you know what I mean. So, so let me go back and uh, uh, explain a bit of a semi-supervised learning space. So, semi-supervised learning space needs both a bit of a label set, which is a trained set and a lot of um, unlabeled data set. Because what it does, it takes a little bit of the label set and a bit of unlabeled set and forms in uh, a mix of labeled and unlabeled. And the reason being that it tries and labels all the unlabeled um, examples that it has in this mix so that the end tra training sample has got more no, I, I, I know, I know, I know, like the, the idea behind, but I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what, what I was just asking. What was the state of the art before, like, before me, uh, this mix of algorithms? Before mix of for semi-supervised. It was a simple semi-supervised approach wherein you have iterations where you take in from um, your uh, unlabeled set perform some basic transformations or have a uh, have some sharpening done for your uh, confidence uh, of your label set uh, having say uh, prediction probability or maybe have co-training methods that have two classifiers learning on the same view etc and then give your uh, uh, prediction so mix match as such introduces all of these methods together so they, they didn't stop at just using simple uh, transformations or simple uh, decision boundary making uh, algorithms or a mix match. So they, this is a combination of all three together. So the state of art didn't have this. So the novelty of this paper is mixing all of these uh, semi-supervised learning approaches together in one to come up with uh, their holistic approach. So that's why the name. Oh, okay. So basically, those like uh, those uh, pseudo label and VAT and uh, mm -hmm. what was it? These are also semi-supervised approaches, yes, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. So suppose we take uh, three examples, right? Extending what you said, uh, cheetahs, tigers, and we add a third one, leopards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, so cheetah and tiger are in the 250 labels that are used and leopards are in the 4,000. Mm -hmm. Does that mean all the cheetahs and all the tigers in your data set are labeled or are some of them unlabeled? They could be some of them unlabeled or they okay. could be some of them labeled. I mean, it can be both. It, based, it, 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 it all depends on the percentage of the unlabeled data that you take. And okay. then they mix up based on the alpha parameter. Okay. So that's, right. that's where the feeding happens. Okay, all right. Thank you. Hi, I'm curious about one thing. You say that you tested with the wound data set. Mm -hmm. uh, did you try 
perform it against fast AI platform? Yes, yes, with fast AI. Yeah, and how how your I mean how is the performance with this method compared to platform AI? Um, for the training uh, set, I did get in about a 64 percent 64 to 69 percent uh, accuracy on the training set initially and with this it did bump up to about 70 but i wasn't sure whether it was uh, the right thing that i was doing so that's i'm still playing around with it but uh, i know where the where the tuning needs to be done so i should be able to have a better uh, accuracy on that this is on the training okay. set. I've not yet gone on to testing the model on the test data set. It'd probably be higher than that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Should we say that's it then? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, um, please get back to me. I should be glad to answer them. And I will share in the link to my notebook. I am still a little not worse with notebooks. I write it in uh, prehistoric languages as an editor and things like that. But I will move on to notebooks soon and I'll post it there. <laughs> uh, so. Thank you very much for attending it, and I'll be looking forward for your questions. Thanks all.